Okay, we're gonna dive in just quickly here on another option which is called a methanol fuel cell. Few people in the room actually have them. I have one, two, three. Anybody else am I missing? Four? Huh. Yay. Methanol fuel cell. Number four in British Columbia to have one. Love it. I'm an early adopter. I like this stuff. Big fat. Big, big fat. It's a definitely, I'm not saying it's a replacement for solar, but it's, it's an alternative. It has its place. So what is a fuel cell? Sorry, this is a little bit whitewash. This is the fuel canister. It's about two gallons, 10 liters. You've got a fuel cell right here. Fuel cell is, gives direct current output. So you can see it's directly connected to the unswitched side of the battery, right? And the reason I'm trying to reiterate this unswitched side is like a car, there's not a lot of wires going to a car battery, right? You'll open your car, it doesn't matter how many gadgets you have in your car, there's two wires going to a car battery. I believe in modular. I believe in like everything should be distributed, right? Like you should have a thing for a purpose. Your battery posts are not distribution points. So everything is phased out. Everything's modular. So I have unswitched distribution, and we'll talk about that. And I saw on the first slide where all basically my charging voltages or amperage go right here. Your EFOI would go to it. Sometimes it might go there if it's a simple install, but most likely it's actually going to go to the unswitched distribution. And it's a device that is about this big, this big, and about this wide. Weighs about 30 pounds. I would say it's pretty dead quiet. 22 decibels. Want to weigh in, anybody that has one, how quiet it is? Can you hear it? No. Yeah, it's a cat. Like it, This is how you, when, when it's on our boat, if it's under the hatch, you'll never hear it. Forget about it. It's impossible. It's not even a fan. Okay, like, you open the hatch, you hold your breath, and you go, yeah, I heard it. It's there. 22 decibels. That's how quiet it is. It's a cat purring, so you can't hear it. You can't feel it. It vibrates, but like so little that you can't. It has on these little foam pads. You can't, if you were holding it, you'd feel it, but it's got little foam pads underneath. You can't feel it. Agreed? Can't feel it. So it's pretty amazing. Dead quiet. Uh, gives output. It can run, because it's so quiet and it doesn't vibrate, you can't feel it, so it runs in the background. It doesn't have high output, right? Like, you can buy an 80 model, a 140 or a 210. Most people choose a 140 or 210. That means the daily amp hour production of the unit. But that's if it runs for a day. But since it's so quiet, why not leave it run when it needs to? Comes on and off automatically. So no noise, no vibration, no smoke. And it's a really good device for people that don't need an AC generator, right? A generator that creates AC that then they're running all these other things. Like they might be running like water makers, dive compressors. This is a DC output. It's a battery charger that is running off methanol. That's what it is, right? Here's a canister. People that buy the 210, I'd say are going to buy maybe three canisters a year. People buy the 140, maybe two. How, how many canisters are you using on your boat in a year? Two is a good number. How many have you used so far? About none? Four years. Yeah, exactly. So the cost of the canister in Canadian is around $80. So people that are going to say, because you're going to have naysayers, any, anytime there's a new technology, most of the room is going to say that's stupid. That's rule number one. And then they're going to say, well, it's going to be so expensive. You've got to buy the fuel. You're like, well, is boating cheap? Like, let me know because I have had a different experience. <laughs> right? I'm like, and I'm like, Three canisters as $80, and I'm doing, I used to, I used to, don't, include every one of my dollars spent on my boat on an Excel spreadsheet in different categories. For very good health reasons, I've stopped doing that. <laughs> but I can tell you for a fact that $240 in my overall boat budget is a rounding number that would never be seen by any accountant. They would be like, oh, that's an accounting error. It's, you, I mean, you, how would you ever catch that? Okay, and that's on the big model. So at the end of the day, it is a battery charger powered by methanol, okay? It's, <clears throat> the one advantage is, unlike solar, it works year-round. So for boaters that are going to be boating on the shoulder season, right? 
That's really good. Winter. I go boating, literally. I'm one of the crazy ones. Two weeks. Christmas. I've done Desolation Sound. Never saw another boat. It was amazing. I owned Desolation Sound for two weeks. Or felt like it. Gulf Islands. Two weeks. Same thing. Would never be able to do it. And I'm at anchor. Like I'm at Wallace Island on Christmas Day. Have the dock and the island to myself. Unless someone else with an efoy comes and joins me. And I'm actually powering the boat with the efoy. So solar would never help me in the winter. And the other thing too, what's really nice is it's a small footprint. The install costs are limited. When you're dueling a solar array, the solar is only half at best of the, of the cost. You've got to do the labor. It's very labor intensive to do a solar array. By the time you route the wires, mount everything, create everything, that's a lot of, there's a lot of time involved. A methanol fuel cell is a very straightforward device to install on a boat, right? It's not a big deal. You'll do it, on average, I'd say between marketing, they'll say you four hours. It's never going to happen, but that's easy. I'd say it's between seven to nine hours on average is to do an EFOI for install. So it's not crazy. I've had other boaters that have installed, installed them on their boat four years ago. They're changing boat. We take it out and we install on the new boat because that doesn't have to go with the boat. Nobody's, if you don't list it, you take it out. If you take away solar panels, they'll know there were solar panels there. That's like removing the lights out of the fixtures and say, oh, I didn't even notice I had lights in here in the room. Really? I never had light fix lights, really? They'll know. You can't remove solar panels. Well, you should put solar panels on your boat. It's going and staying with your boat. But an EFOI, it's not a commitment. As long as you're into boating or RVing, because I've done the same thing where we install it on the RV, but we also pre-wire it for the boat. In the fall or in the winter, they use that down south. And then in the summer, when they're boating, we swap it out and put it into the boat. So that's another thing too. And you want to make sure that you choose the right size, right? So 80 is 80 amp hours a day, 140 amp hours a day, or 210 amp hours a day. If you do the calculation from their website, you're always going to end up to this ridiculous number. You have to talk to someone. If you're kind of curious, talk to me to figure out what the real size is. But most people, I'd say it's like 47%, 47%, and then like 5% this one. It's very rare people do 80s, very rare. Most people choose the 140 or the 210. Or the same footprint. Too. Same footprint, yeah, same footprint. Yeah, yeah. Um, the unit does need some ventilation, so there's, you know, you do need some, and it comes with vents and routing, but you, you can't have it in a completely, you can close it in a refrigerator, close the refrigerator, like any, any unit needs some way to dissipate the heat. It does output distilled water, so on some sailboats we'll run the hose to the bilge, or some other boats will run it to a little, uh, like a bike water bottle, right? And then some people reuse that water, literally, to go back into their distilled water for their flooded lead acid batteries. Now they have a way to retop the batteries. Um, the orientation of the unit is important. Um, and also, if the EFOI is far, far away from the batteries, we end up increasing the wire size to offset, and we'll talk about that tomorrow, voltage drop. Voltage drop is something that's about efficiency. It's how do you harness all the energy from a device. I always carry a spare fuel because that's an issue, and I mean, that's a reality. As, as a boater that has a methanol fuel cell, you're not going to be in the middle of nowhere and go and as you can buy fuel. So what I do on my own boat, I always carry, for example, if I had an EFOI 140, I'd always have one spare. I have an EFOI 210, I have two spares. I have one on the unit, and I have two just waiting. I have what I need for a year on my boat. So I simply never have to worry about it. When I finish using one, I go, oh, I got to get another one. And literally, I'm never, oh, I forgot. I'm at Easter with friends, and then I'm missing fuel, right? Because you're not going to... You're not going to go in the middle of nowhere on Cortez or in Desolation Sound in Refuge Cove and say, do you have an E4 cartridge for me, please? It's not. We're not there on the adoption rate yet. So you buy them in centers like Nanaimo's going to have it, Sydney, Campbell River's going to have it. Even I had a place in uh, Port, um, Port, Port McNeil, Port Hardy. You, you can get them in those places, but in the remote places, you're not going to have an E4 cartridge, the methanol. So that's something to consider. What about other countries? Yeah, and that's a good point. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to bring that. Yeah, what about other countries? People that are going offshore, that are using their boat every day, day in, day out, 
and are literally sailing away into the sunset and they're going to go to Fiji? No, it doesn't make sense. It won't. It doesn't. Because where are you going to get the fuel? Right? You need, it's more for coastal cruising. Right? And also, yeah, the, the fuel availability would be a big challenge. Right? So people are here coastal, no problem. People who go offshore, not that you can't have it. For example, sailors that race Vic Maui, perfect device. Don't increase your battery bank size, right? Don't run the engine while underway. Have it, you sail to Hawaii two weeks, three weeks, come back, perfect, right? Makes sense. But someone who's going offshore for five years, 10 years, or they intend to, I wouldn't be proposing that. What about the memory? How long does it last? Yeah, the memory has a limited life. Absolutely. That's another thing, too. Nothing lasts forever. On average, with heavy use, EFOI has the numbers. I think in Germany, they're saying about seven years, 10 years to get to about 50% of output on heavy use. Most people using three fuel cartridges a year will never see that. We're light users here. So Be seven years? Yeah, absolutely, because it's not a time thing, it's hours. Right? Like, for example, an EFOI, an M10 cartridge, will give you uh, 900 amp hours. So on my unit, 900 something, right? 24 hours at 210, that's about four days in a bit. That's only 100 hours. In a year, if I use it 300 hours, and now I'm a heavy user, right? That's over 3,000 hours over 10 years until I get there, right? It's, a, it's like anything else. Usage is the factor. And what I always want to emphasize about something like that is you're not building your electrical system around it. This is in supplement to everything you already have on your boat. So if you have a battery charger, if you have an alternator, this doesn't replace both of those items. It's, it's about filling, you know, between the peaks and the valleys. It's about filling in those points when you don't have power, your alternator, and you want to stay an extra day. You can stay the first day. Most of us can stay the first day at Anchorage all the time. We're going to eventually move. But it's about filling in the voids at the end, right? Because it's not doing everything. It actually will shut itself off if it doesn't need to run. If your whole boat didn't have batteries or had a small battery, no alternator, no charger, you'd use it a lot more. But it's a supplement to what you already have on your boat. Any questions on methanol fuel cells? Yes? So on a small sailboat, this might be more efficient than on a solar panel. Absolutely. Yeah, especially small boats. I'm not sure. Well, how, what's the size of your boat? Yeah, like the 80 would probably be a really good size. Yeah. You have to have a place to put it, though. Yeah, but on a 27-foot sailboat, you, yeah. you... You could find a home. There's, all, there's a way. Put it under a bench somewhere. There's a way. There's a way. I've done, I've done a 24-foot sailboat around the world. Weird. He ended up going with this. Built that home boat. And he ended up going with this. Because he's not sailing all the time. He's sailing for a bit, stops, comes back to work, goes back, has the fuel delivered, and it's a way to supplement. He's a purist. He doesn't like to, he doesn't actually have an engine. When we installed our Georgia, we could not have it in the salon area no. at all. We installed no. it in a cockpit like that. No, that's not. It's, that's a fallacy. That's a mis, that is a misunderstanding. Now, here's where they probably got that from. It emits, and I might get this wrong, carbon, di carbon dioxide. Uh, but so do I. And uh, it emits the same amount as a cat. So if you're going to willing to lock down your boat, duct tape everything, hot box it, you're, this would be a good way to go. Like that's probably better than a car. You will die in your boat for sure. Guaranteed. So yes, it does emit, but it's the amount of a cat. So if you can't bring a cat into your boat, then I would say maybe we need to think about ventilation. Ventilation might be an option because it might be, you're probably going on your boat, you're always drowsy. You're like, this is amazing. I really relax on my boat all the time. <laughs> like, I'm always coming here. I can't sleep at home. Suddenly I come in on my boat and I'm always passing out. Yeah, no, you can absolutely install it. It does emit, but it doesn't, that's the thing. And that's the thing about new technologies. It's not that new. It's been around for a while. I think EFOI is built in Germany. I think they've been in business for 12, 15 years. Something like that. Like it's not like the first time, and uh, but people just have these connotations. They're probably thinking generator. You can't have a generator in your cabin. Like what about gassing? What's going to happen? 
you can, mine is definitely inside. Not everyone does. The only concern might be in a really warm engine room, might be a concern. Any other questions? What yeah. The cost of those compared to solar panels? That's they're actually very similar. Yeah, they're very similar. Like the 140 is about five grand Canadian, about. Maybe a little bit more, a little, yeah, I think maybe 51, 52, I don't know. But the big cincher is the install costs are straightforward, right? Because it's a day. Now you might install it yourself, doesn't matter, or have someone do it. Solar panel, if you're gonna spend, for example, 140 watt good quality solar panel, 145 watt solar panel is about $850. To have the same type of output, you need four. Okay, so now you're around 32. You need controllers. You're gonna either go four or two big ones. You're about total four grand. Then you need wiring. Add another 500. You got 45. Now you gotta do the labor. Now you gotta mount them. All right, the labor's not a day. I don't, I'm not an optimist, right? Like I scare people all the time with my numbers, all the time. Lots of potential clients go, oh, well, he's crazy. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna lie to you to then pretend that I'm disappointed that it didn't go as well as I thought. Like I'm gonna set the expectation right away. Things are expensive. And if we were not okay with that, that's fine, but we're not gonna pretend that we're surprised that things take a long time on a boat. And then you gotta put, I'll come to that. And then you gotta basically do the work. So solar is always, in my opinion, gonna be more money than an EFOI. It's not to say one is better than the other. It really depends on how you use your boat, right? Some people love solar. They boat just in the summer. I have boaters that just do summer boating and they, they also like the idea and that's it, that's all they do. If you're just boating in the summer, you know, there is an argument to do solar, absolutely. And if you're going offshore, well then solar makes a lot of sense. If you're in a places remote, totally makes sense. But if you're doing fall or winter, then solar is, it's hard to justify as the only option, right? Question? Yeah, it, yeah. Rule number one, nothing is easy. <laughs> All right, any other questions on methanol fuel cells? 